It's off people who are going through the same situation as well. Also working at the cafe these days is 16-year-old Sean, son of Karen and John, the autistic baker, as he likes to call himself. I do white and brown soda bread, but hoping to expand out to do other types of bread, like baguettes or even sourdough. I also do the cupcakes and the Madeira bake. Which are the most popular? I think the cupcakes are. The cupcakes are the best ones. And you obviously enjoy it. Do you feel you have a talent for this? I think so, yeah. I'm very good with my hands, so this practical stuff I'm kind of just naturally good at. Tell me about um, the brand that you came up with for your bakery. Well, the Autistic Baker really just comes from, I guess, myself, but then the reason being was because the word autistic seems very kind of mean, the way it's said. It's more, to me, I've heard it more of an insult than anything, so I kind of want to use that instead. So you took a word that had negative connotations for you, you owned it and turned it into something incredibly positive. Yes, I did indeed. And what about ambitions for the future, Sean? Um, well, at the moment, we're hoping to open a cookery school so other kids can go in and maybe find their passion for baking or cooking. And then we could also be supplying the cafe, so the cafe will be supplied with loads of cupcakes and I could be doing actual pastas, I could be doing home meals and stuff. When you look at Sean now as the autistic baker from years ago, when he was, I suppose, going through all this tough time for him, like, with the aggression and like you wouldn't see him then where he is now. No, it's fantastic to see him so positive, so loving coming in every day, doing his baking. And he's so gentle. Yeah. He's like the gentle giant, they call him in here, and he hugs and he talks to people and it's amazing. I'm it's so fabulous. proud of, yeah. of the journey that he's come on. Proud of. Sean's diagnosis was Asperger's high functioning ability, mm. but his life doesn't portray no. that he's had high, you know, functioning ability. He struggled hugely with anxiety mm. and, and stress all of his life. And like, it's tough too when the guys like him where high function, functioning autism is always like, oh, sure, he'll be fine, you know? But nobody actually sees the underlying problems that they have day to day, you know? That's why we were very much about giving him as much support um, to be a very strong, independent young man mm -hmm. that will be able to, to whatever the journey takes him, It'll be his journey. Over mechanic into it. Right. If the balloons hit the cat, then it's game. It's game. Karen and John's youngest son, 12 year old Stephen, is more into gaming than baking, but he's rightfully proud of his older brother. My thoughts are really like cool about it. Like, I've always been wanting, I've always like tried his food mm. and I've always liked it. Mm. Like, the Madeira cake is really nice, the bread is good. And tell us about the kind of activities that you do here at the Rainbow Club. One of the things I do as gamer is coding. We learn how to make like video game things. We make like little characters and commands for the characters. Oh, game over. <laughs> do you do sports as well? Yeah, I do sports, like a lot of exercise and I do workouts with Simon on Wednesday. So I'm going to call the uh, colour and you're going to try and crawl out and get the colour for in the bean bag and then put it on the platform, yeah? What kind of work do you do with Simon? Do you, tell me about regulation work, what that involves. Um, it involves like calming down like a kid, like if they're like stressed out, angry, sad or really anxious. Mm. It helps them like regulate and calm down. It is, it's time to go. This is Molly older sister to Stephen and Sean. Her experience of having brothers with autism prompted her to set up siblings groups at the Rainbow Club, making it a true family affair. I really struggled with my brother's diagnosis and there were really no supports out there for me. So I decided to develop this programme. It directly targets the needs of siblings while also supporting the child with autism. We started the programme in 2020 with 16 kids. Now we have 76 kids coming every week for continuous, permanent support. Who are you going to give this picture to at the end of the class? To Ellen. Siblings tend to be the very first friends that children with additional needs make. And sometimes, a lot of the time, they're their only friends. Yeah. Um, so it's very important that 
that relationship is cherished and that it's nurtured and that for the sibling it's something that they understand and something that they pull close to them and value. Is there a sense sometimes if you have a sibling with autism that the parent's energy is taken away from you because they're preoccupied with the sibling who has autism? It can, it can happen and it does, we do see it a lot where, you know, parents are so busy trying to get school places and services. You know, there's so much to autism and it's such a hard concept to grasp when you're beginning to learn about it and stuff like that. But for these kids, it's, it's their lives. You know, they live it every day. They, you know, see the ins and outs of it. They see the things that service providers don't see. They see, you know, the backlash at home. They see what goes on in the car on the way to school, you know. And what is it that a sibling might need? We provide a space where they can meet other kids like them and also learning those coping skills for when things get too much, what do we do? And when something happens, how do we go about dealing with it and things like that. Um, and also just a place that they can come and chill out for an hour. We stay in Cork to meet the celebrated writer and actor Jodie O'Neill, whose theatre work in seven is years the Rainbow Club has expanded community faster than even Karen and John would have hoped, with families travelling from as far as Waterford and Limerick. So, what are the plans and hopes for the future? I'd love to see it replicated all over the country, like we have nearly a thousand families a week coming here, and that every child in the country could get what we're giving out. It gives them families that, that space and gives the kids a place where they feel they're understood, accepted, and they can just thrive. And part of that is that we want a forever home, somewhere that we can have everything under one roof. We want Mahan to be our home because Mahan is where we started. The Mahan area and the people in the community are the people who accepted us and helped us in creating this wonderful place. For them, it's really hard. Like, um, both of them are the head of the club. So it's really hard for them. We were the reason they started the whole club, so it's great to know that because of us, they could help loads of other kids. And you're talking about who there? My mom and dad, so Jaren and, or, oh, <laughs> John and Karen. <laughs> Might need to redo that one. After the break, we stay in Cork to meet the celebrated writer and actor Jodie O'Neill, talking about theatre work autism. is educating now in a, a move wider community about autism, inclusion and acceptance of autism, two leading Cork institutions have launched a new initiative 